We're so glad you've joined us for the Dufresne Faith Journal. I've been here with Tony Jones. He's our music director at the church, and we've been talking about music and the yeah. anointing in the local yes. church. I want to hit on two, two different things okay. in this episode, but one, and you reminded me of it, is when we have a guest minister, mm -hmm. because we talked about we want in our local church to create a room that whoever's ministering right. can reach the highest, the highest potential. Yeah. Depending on who your guest minister is, you're right. going to handle that music differently. Yes. Um, if someone is at the prophet's office, right. the music is re plays a real big role. Yes. Someone in another office, it may not play the exact same kind of a role, but it still has an effect. Yes, it does. Um, one of the things that pastors need to understand is you're not bringing guest ministers in so they can listen to your choir yeah, <laughs> or listen to your music team and they'll keep going yep. and going. Mm. I, I love something that Dr. Summerall told a pastor. Yeah. He said, is there anything we can do, Dr. Summerall, to help you in the service tonight? And he said, remember this, the longer you sing, the shorter I preach. <laughs> the, shorter you, the shorter you sing, the longer I yeah. preach. You don't right. want to rob from the why you had the guest minister there to do 45 minutes of right, music right. because I mean seriously I mean as a woman I'm standing in heels yep and I go to get you know guest minister my feet are hurting if I stand through, through your song service for 45 That's minutes right. yeah you know when you you can run your local church how you want it right. when it's at, when mm -hmm. when it's just your family right but when you're bringing in a guest it right. has to accommodate the guest so uh, it's so important. What Tell us what you're mindful of to do. Uh, when we're preparing for a guest minister to, come, minister to come in, I'll get on YouTube and watch their flow and see the service. You know, how can I help them? What's going to keep them in their in yet, their room? In their room, but yet it's not going to conflict. Right. It's not because he knows this. I won't let any no. song in that's out of a completely different no. camp. And <laughs> yeah. And I'm talking about. No, I understand the more emphasis. More speed and uh, emphasis and what's going to help them. Do they, like gonna, songs, do they like faster songs? Do they like Slower songs? Like yes. Slow, yes. You know, keep it shorter. Get it going. Is it, if it's Dr. Dufresne coming. You know, yeah, then yeah. we would, you know, and so that's one thing that we would do. And then, like you said, keep it short. That's one thing we train our people uh, when we have a guest minister. Our whole church knows. So it's, you know, mm -hmm. we know that we want to hear from them. They, yeah. they haven't come, like you said, to hear from us. They haven't come to hear how beautiful the harmonies are, mm -hmm. how beautiful the band is. The band's, you know, the band's not coming to show out, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, um, yeah. and I tell them, hey, we're going to keep it short. We're going to get in. We're going to yeah. get the people together, unify, and then we're going to give it over because we want to hear from them. They're here to help us. Well, I like what you said about finding the flow that, that impacts their anointing yeah. because I know, uh, y'all knew that at Rama mm -hmm. that Dad Hagen liked yes. a certain pace of yes. song, yes. and then uh, his son Ken Jr. Uh -huh. liked uh -huh. a, another pace, right, and right. that's so important right. to pay attention Absolutely. to that. Um, and then the big key is keep the keep the song service short. Yeah, keep it short. I'm talking like <laughs> ten minutes short. Yeah, now. because when we have Brother Copeland, as soon as he right. comes out, we we're, we're finishing up one song, then he's up there. Yeah, you tell me. Once you see Brother Copeland comes out, two, three minutes, get him comfortable enough to let him you know, set his Bible down, set, get set acclimated. Down. Yeah. Once he's ready to go, boom, we're stopping it. You know, Pastor yeah. will come up and we're giving it over to him. Now, see, when Brother Richard Roberts was with right. us, uh, music is a part of his ministry. Yep. I mean, it's a part of the anointing that yeah. affects him. And so he came out. And he entered in, and you could see the anointing was, the music was helping him go further. Right. So we stayed in right. that, not because we were trying to show out, but we we saw that it was bringing, it was, it was helping to him. him. Uh -huh. So, yeah, and that's one thing that, you know, you have to learn we're that. doing is be alert, be watching. You know, don't stare at them the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Glance over. Is this helping them? Or are they ready to go? And don't yeah. be... Don't be upset or don't be, you know, touchy if they're ready to get it going. It ain't about you. Because 99% of the time, get them up there as quick get as you can. Get them up there as quick mm -hmm. as you can. Absolutely. Another thing is that sometimes a pastor will recognize, you know what, I need to, we need to get it more into a word and spirit flow in our church. Mm -hmm. And I can tell our music has been going a way that's not facilitating yeah. that. And so they'll say, we want to get more into a spirit serve, a spirit flow in our music. Yes. 
The thing that you have to remember is this. If a church has been flowing for years yeah. with one style of music, mm -hmm. one flavor of music, one camp of music, and then all of a sudden you want to bring a Holy Ghost. Well, that's right. That's right, fine. Right. But you're, what that means is the people are practiced in a different flow. Right. And to have a a flow of the spirit in the music, you have to practice, practice. that. And the congregation has to practice, not just yes, that yes. you have to, for example, someone was telling me that, you know, they were trying to get, bring in more of a Holy Ghost flow mm -hmm. where people were rejoicing. They yes. were used to doing more of the slow worship stuff. Right. And they wanted to bring in more of the upbeat and uh, get the people, you know, responding to the spirit. Yes. And so the people that was new to the congregation, so they just kind of stood there because they're not used to that flow of music. And so what happened, the music team flipped back and went back to what they were used uh, to. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got, just like the music team has to practice getting in that right. flow, you have to work with the congregation to give them time. So even though if it doesn't seem like they're hooking in at first, just keep going that direction. Yes. right. Because they're not used to it. Right. And so you keep going and working with the people, exhort them in between, then get back into the song. Yes. Don't flip back to the old no, flow. No. If you the realize flow works. that the, 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 this, the flow of the Spirit always works, and sometimes it takes a time for the people to jump into that, but it doesn't mean it's the wrong direction. Right. Just because the people aren't responding right. at first to it. So it's so important to keep working with the people. Dad Hagen used to do that with us. Remember mm -hmm. when he started his Holy Ghost meetings? Uh -huh. And it was new for the congregation. And he would stop and exhort a little bit about yeah. why rejoicing and laughter and praising and all that. And he'd keep working with the congregation. Yes. And that's so important for the music team to understand sometimes you have to work with the yeah. congregation. Yeah. You might have to have one of the worship leaders exhort a little bit. Yes, yes. About why are we rejoicing right now, you know? Right. Don't just flip back because the people haven't hooked on. They're not used to that flow. Right. I remember traveling with Brother Hagen. You know, we'll go into a church and sometimes they weren't used to it or mm -hmm. practicing it. Mm -hmm. And we knew, but usually we knew by Thursday night, you yeah. know, yeah. It, I don't know, you know, Wednesday, Thursday night, it was when it was going to, yeah. it was going to, you know, resonate in them and that revelation would come and we would just have ourselves a. Yeah. And a, you have to be patient. You got to be patient. Let it, and not, not abandon it just because they're not hooking right. in. Right. Yeah, he just kept, he knew if they weren't grabbing it, then he didn't keep on going and give them more piece by piece, you know, feed them the word, give them a flow. He didn't say, oh, well, they're not catching on and y'all sing a whole, find what they like and do that. Right, <laughs> You know, right, Brother right. Hagen never did that. He well, was just, you know, the thing is, Dad Hagen, because he kept working with us in the congregation. I'm talking about us ministers mm -hmm. were there. Yes. He kept working with us. And I say, thank God he did because he didn't just try to have a Holy Ghost flow, and if they didn't, he just forgot it. He just kept working with us and working and encourage and remind. You know, you think about it. Remember when Jesus went to his hometown of Nazareth and said, the Spirit of the Lord's upon me. He's yeah. anointing me to preach the gospel yes. of the poor, and then he goes on and gives his job description. Mm -hmm. They didn't like that, so yeah. they tried to push him off the hill. They went to a hill to try yes. to push him off. And the Bible says that he went about their cities and villages teaching and preaching. So what did he do? He didn't just say, forget them. Yeah. He, he started teaching the yes. people. And this is what the pastor will have to help in, in this. Yes. Uh, the music team will have to, like I said, sometimes in, 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 in between a song, exhort a little bit. Yes. Maybe take a scripture that tells why you're doing what you're doing. Yes. And exhort a little bit or let the pastor do it, Who, whoever, how, mm -hmm. however they choose to play it out. Yeah. But you have to keep working with yes. the people. Yes. And you don't step into this flow overnight. They have to be practiced at it. it takes time. And it's, this is so key to people understanding if they realize, wait, we need, a, we need a stronger word and spirit flow in our church, not just a word flow. Thank God for the word. You've got to have both. Right. But you also have to have practice in both. And some yes. are more practiced in listening to the word than in responding yeah. to the spirit. Yes, absolutely. You know, Morgan and I, we, we did some Deframe Faith journals on responding to yes. the spirit. 
and it takes time for people to learn to even hook in and respond to the Spirit in worship and in praise. Yes. And so that's where y'all, I, I see you do it time and time again. You'll hit a flow to get the people rejoicing and they'll just kind of stand there and you just stay after yeah, it. Yeah, you got to stay, stay after, after, it. after it. And it doesn't, just because they're not hooking in doesn't mean they're, they're, that you're missing the A flow. lot of times God's working something in them. <laughs> yeah. And it takes time sometimes, you know, and you got to give it, you got to give them that, that space to let them work. Let him keep on emphasizing what he's emphasizing, mm -hmm. you know, and... Uh, Sometimes to, to get past the traditional thinking mm -hmm. that they may have had. Sometimes, peop and so people will say many times in a service, they'll say, well, it's not my personality to be, you know, very expressive. It, this isn't about oh, personality. No. This is about your spirit responding to what the Spirit of God is doing. So leave your personality out of it. And sometimes it takes a while to get people to sit past their flesh. Because right. really what they're saying is my flesh doesn't like this. Right. And so you have to give them time to get past their flesh. And you have to exhort them. Right. Learning how not to worship out of your emotion. <laughs> because, and that's a huge key, Jesus said, the Father is seeking those who worship in yeah. spirit and in, in truth, truth, not in emotions and truth. Right, right. In the spirit and in truth. And so this is this goes back to where we were talking about you have to have doctrine in your songs because yes. it's got to have truth in it. Yes. And doctrine in the songs is really one way people make confessions. Yes. You know, you were quoting that, that song, It Shall Come to Pass. That's a confession. Mm -hmm. And uh, so all of these, all of these play such a role. Anything else that you have for us, Tony, that you want to emphasize and remind yeah, people about? Yeah, only thing I want to say to uh, music directors and uh, musicians is get around. Get That's around a huge those, key. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. who flow, who know this flow. Get on YouTube. Come to the services. Yeah. You cannot... That's how my husband and I hooked in. Now, my husband was always a man of the spirit. I mean, that mm -hmm. that flow yes. was always present in his ministry. But Dad Hagen fortified us in that because we would go to his services and we would get in that flow. You will never be good at a flow you're not around. Right. And so we, on purpose, it cost us money. Yes. It cost us time, but it was so worth that investment to get us in that flow. Now, when Dad Hagen left this earth, we didn't leave that flow. Right, right. That was the, and so many have searched different flows out because Dad Hagen left. Right. Dad Hagen was setting before us the heavenly vision for us to continue yes, in for this era. Yes, ma'am. And like Paul said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. In our church, I can say yes. before God, we have been obedient to the heavenly vision of what Dad Hagen by the Spirit. It wasn't just Dad Hagen right. setting the flow. Right. It was right. the, spirit the Spirit through Dad Hagen setting the flow for this end time era. We were not disobedient to that. But the reason we weren't because we got around him. We got in those services and we practiced with him. So for people today who say, I see that I need to get into another flow of the Spirit. You're not going to just do that by listening to CDs. You've got to get in services. Got to get in them. You have to take the time, yes. take, spend the money. Don't yep. try to save money. Invest in the anointing. Invest in your future. Spend whatever you have to spend to get in services where the Word and Spirit is being uh, not just experimenting, but yeah. they really have some skill at it. Right. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to boldly say it, and it's not in a, in, from a wrong place, but there is the earmark of that on this ministry. Yes that when you come to our Holy Ghost meetings, our camp meeting, we always have made room for the Word and Spirit to flow. Yes. Have we been perfect at it? Probably not. <laughs> but at least we're reaching together. And right, you have reaching. to get around that. Pastors need to get around that. You need to get mm. your music teams yeah. in these services where this is happening so they can see the example of it and then go home and start moving in it themselves. It doesn't come overnight. No, man. Things of the Spirit, you don't just step in and out of. You have to... You have to... But grace carries you into it. Yes, you have yes. to practice it and keep going and just stay around it until it becomes something that your your skill level increases in. Yeah. I want to say something real quick before we finish out this episode, and that is with this word skill. Somebody may have a talent, born with a talent or a grace to sing and perform, but I tell you what, talent will not take the place of skill. Sometimes no. people just relax on, well, I, I'm talented in that area. 
But you know, the people that really, that they, I'm, even in the natural, you can have somebody that's good at sports, somebody yes. that's good at, you know, artistry, whatever. They may have a bend, but they'll never reach their full potential till they sit under someone that helps them become skillful. So I would encourage anybody that has a musical ability, a call in that direction, don't just relax on your talent. Right. Get under someone who has skill and train that. Talent and potential are not spendable. No, sir. They don't, no, sir. They don't translate into service. And the Bible said that David played with skill before yes. the Lord. It doesn't say he played with talent. Right. He had talent. Right. We know that he had a natural bend towards music, and he was a psalmist. I mean, that's where so many of our psalms came from. Yes. But he played with skill. Yeah. God anoints skill. Skill. He doesn't just anoint, I love the Lord, so I'm going to sing. Right. <laughs> I'm I love the Lord, so I'm going to play the drums. Or Thank God you love the Lord. That has to be a foundational element, but don't leave out the skill. God is worthy of skillful musicians yes. ministering to him yes. and yes. ministering to the people. He, you know, so much, it's, it's not right that the world has such excellent skill. I mean, in their soundtracks for right. movies, yeah. the skill is just off the charts, isn't it? Yes. But God's so far more worthy of that level. Amen. And so I would encourage if there's a bend in you, uh, uh, an ability there, get skillful with get it. Skillful. Amen. Amen. Tony, thank you for joining you, me Pastor. for these episodes. It's yes, been a, it's been a pleasure. The body of Christ needs to yes. be reminded of these things. These things need to be articulated. As we've said in other episodes, if you're a pastor or if you're part of a music team, get these episodes yeah. and watch them together as a music as a music team. Take notes on it, discuss it. Yeah, think, talk shop. You know, d take homework assignments from it. What do we need to do? What do we need to address? Listen to the vision of your pastor. Pay attention to the anointing and the flow of your pastor and make that your assignment to help this, the congregation and help the pastor. Now, first of all, it's we're ministering to the Lord. Yes. Absolutely, first of all. But then the one of the best ways that the Lord can express himself is right. if we are... At, enhancing what's on the pastor and Amen. what God wants to do in That's service. Right. So um, I hope these things have helped. Yeah, I trust they have helped yeah. and uh, get in, get in these meetings. We've got some, we've got, up, we've got meetings going all the, all time, the time in our church. All the time. Find out online what upcoming meetings and get in these meetings and it'll be a help to you. And like I said, get their music team, send yeah. their, your worship team here. to yeah. these to these to these kinds of meetings and uh, it'll be a blessing to them amen. Amen. amen we love you thank you for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Deframe faith journal god bless you thank you for watching today's show be sure to check out all the latest episodes on our youtube page for more information follow us on facebook or visit our website at dufresneministries.org Bible Training Center is an exciting place where you'll get trained in the Word and in the Spirit. If you're looking for a Bible school, this is the place for you. God had a business that we would start and we're in that business full time. And I would not be in this business full time right now running a very successful company if I didn't go back and do Bible school. Well, I can tell you that it's been the best thing for me, that my life has been uh, renovated, renewed, recharged. Holy Ghost really dealt with me strong about moving my family from Ohio to California. I didn't know all the ins and outs. I didn't know anything about a job, but I just knew I had to be here. And so for anybody out there, I'm telling you, you may not know all the steps, you may not know how and when, but if you just follow the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you, it's gonna change your life forever. I wanna recommend World Harvest Bible Training Center as a wonderful place to send your children. Uh, I chose to send my children here. I'm a pastor and my children grew up in the ministry. They've been taught the word. 
Uh, but this school uh, has been such a blessing. My family is more united together on the same page than ever before. They came back with the same vision, not with a different vision. And so I highly recommend World Harvest Bible Training Center for your kids. World Harvest Bible Training Center is a full-time two-year Bible school, which includes an optional third-year internship program. Here, we emphasize the teaching of the Word along with the move of the Spirit. It's a catching school where the spirit of faith can be caught through impartations, revelations, and demonstrations. World Harvest Bible Training Center is a family that's flowing with the Word and the Spirit. Don't hesitate. Apply today. You can log on to our website at DeframeMinistries.org or give us a call at 951-696-9258. We look forward to hearing from you.